All right, so now that those tricky proofs are out of the way, let's just take a step back and let's just remind ourselves, you know, what properties does Tendermint have? Uh, and is there any way in which we might hope to have a still better uh, state machine replication protocol? Well, we've seen that there's a bunch of aspects of this guarantee that we can't improve. Okay, so for example, without changing anything else, we cannot take F to be N over three or any larger number. All right, so holding everything else fixed, we can't, uh, we can't tolerate any additional Byzantine nodes. Um, how about, you know, keeping everything else fixed, making weaker assumptions about the communication network, assuming the asynchronous model rather than the partially synchronous model. That also, by the FLP and possibility result, uh, we know we cannot do. Okay, FLP and possibility says that even when F equals 1, okay, you can't get um, consistency and liveness in the asynchronous model. So then you say, okay, well, you know, what if we just sort of keep the same uh, bound on the number of Byzantine nodes, we keep the partially synchronous model, but we just want stronger guarantees. Okay, so we're getting consistency always already. We're only getting liveness eventually. You know, maybe we can switch liveness to always as well. And this, again, we know is impossible from the FLP impossibility uh, results. Uh, during the asynchronous phase, you're just not going to be able to have both safety and liveness. You need to compromise on at least one of them until you reach the synchronous phase. So is Tendermint just simply the end of the story in state machine replication? Is there any reason to ever think about other protocols? Uh, well, there are. So let me mention sort of two um, kind of orthogonal directions that would be interesting to explore, even given the very nice guarantees that Tendermint offers. So first of all, I mean, you can look for other points on the Pareto curve, right? So we're not going to find a protocol that, you know, in these senses strictly dominates Tendermint, but maybe there's one that's incomparable, okay, that's stronger in some respects and weaker in others. For example, uh, we could stick with a partially synchronous model. We could stick with this or some, some sort of analogous bound on the number of Byzantine nodes. And we could ask, you know, could we strengthen liveness to always while relaxing consistency to eventually? So in other words, could we escape the FLP impossibility result by giving up on consistency rather than giving up on liveness um, during the asynchronous phase? Obviously, in the synchronous phase, as usual, you would like to have both. And again, you know, in the 20th century, it might have been sacrilege to suggest sort of giving up on safety in the attack phase. Um, but in fact, this is exactly the alternative trade-offs uh, that the most famous uh, blockchain protocols like Bitcoin and Ethereum make. Okay? They do, in fact, uh, make this alternative set of trade-offs, as we'll see. A second, totally different direction, which uh, is worth exploring, and actually people have been exploring very actively in recent years, is matching the guarantees you see for the Tendermint protocol written on this slide, but doing so with a protocol that has uh, superior performance. Now, performance, you know, that, that's sort of a loaded word when it comes to, for example, blockchain protocols. Uh, you know, ask sort of 10 different blockchain experts what, what's the most important performance metric, and you'll probably get 11 different answers. Uh, but you can imagine there's various things, you know, you can try to optimize. Like, for example, the number of messages that nodes have to send to each other, the number of times you have to do certain, you know, comp, you know expensive cryptographic operations, etc. And as I said at the beginning of this boot camp on classical consensus protocols, you know, I told you I was never going to worry really about sort of uh, any of these kinds of performance metrics. One of the reasons is what I just mentioned is it's sort of, you know, there's not wide agreement on which performance metrics are sort of the, the most useful ones to focus on. Uh, but also it's just a little bit out into the weeds. I mean, this isn't a lecture series entirely on uh, sort of consensus protocols. It's really on blockchains. And there's a lot of other interesting aspects of blockchains that we want to have time for. But that does not mean that this is not interesting. It, it is, in fact, quite interesting. And in the academic research community, there's, there's been a lot of work, many papers over, over the last few years uh, that make progress on multiple different performance metrics. Um, and also that work is also relevant to practice. Let me give you two examples. Uh, so one nice example is um, Facebook's efforts in the blockchain direction. Uh, so in particular, they have this project DM, formerly called Libra. And the consensus protocol that's currently on the table to be used uh, when they roll that out 
uh, can be sort of viewed as an optimized version of Tendermint. It's a protocol uh, known as hot stuff. And from sort of 30,000 feet, it's kind of like sort of a pipelined kind of uh, more round efficient version of Tendermint. There's, there's a bunch of other changes as well, but from a high level, that's sort of how you can think about it. So the second example concerns Ethereum. Um, so there's a bunch of sort of major changes um, slated uh, to the Ethereum blockchain uh, in 2022 and beyond. One of which is a major change to the consensus protocol, so which is currently longest chain consensus, which we'll talk about next in lecture eight. They're gonna switch from pure longest chain consensus um, to something that a little bit more resembles uh, you know, things like Tendermint, these classical consensus protocols. So there's several things that have been put on the table, but just to give you like one thing, um, you can do a web search for if you want. Or you look at Casper FFG. FFG is the friendly finality gadget. Um, and again, lots of sort of various details that are different, but from 30,000 feet, you can again sort of think of that as some kind of, you know, pipelined, more round efficient uh, sort of version of the Tendermint protocol. And in both of these cases, in, in both the case of hot stuff and the uh, potential new consensus protocols in Ethereum, again, the qualitative guarantees are going to be exactly what you see here in Tendermint. So there's going to be this magical 33% threshold of how many Byzantine nodes you can tolerate. And again, what you're after is in the partially synchronous model, you always have consistency, cons consistency even in the face of an attack, uh, and you have eventual liveness, liveness after an attack concludes. So this is very cool stuff. You know, hopefully a few of you sort of inspired by the last few lectures feel motivated to go sort of, you know, dig into the research literature and or sort of the white papers uh, for these protocols I mentioned to see more about how they work, how they actually achieve these efficiencies. What does it mean to pipeline multiple Byzantine agreement protocols? Um, all that kind of stuff. We're not going to have time for it. Um, but if you are interested, you are now extremely well positioned uh, to understand that literature and those white papers, uh, having gone through the last uh, six, seven lectures um, of this series. So that wraps up lecture seven. It also pretty much wraps up um, the time we're going to spend on sort of 20th century ideas. Tendermint, granted, I mean, that's a more recent protocol. That's from the, from the last decade, but it's heavily inspired by protocols from, from the 1980s. Um, but starting with the next lecture, lecture eight, where we start talking about longest chain consensus, which was one of the big innovations that came along uh, in Bitcoin, uh, we're going to be, we're going to have our eyes uh, focused squarely on the, on the 21st century. So see you in lecture eight uh, for longest chain consensus.